Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks from the New Art School. Our guest today is Shalini Prasad. Welcome, Shalini. Hi, happy to be here. <laughs> uh, it's so great to have you here, finally. Thank you, Lefteris. So tell us about you. Oh, gosh, that's a loaded <laughs> question. Well, my name is Shalini Prasad. I am... I'll tell you what I do, and then we'll put some names and terminologies to it. I, I'm, a, I'm a designer. I create uh, for the purposes of visual communication, storytelling, uh, self-expression in both the two-dimensional and the three-dimensional realm. And I also create environments for collective learning. So in other words, I'm an integrative designer, a brand consultant, um, a mixed media artist, and foremost, an educator. Um, I have a background in architecture, fine arts, and graphic design. And I love being uh, in no man's land. I love uh, not belonging, and I love to have my thumb in many pies. So mm. that's really my little, my background. I teach that's really at, exciting. Uh, yeah. I run my own shop called Disha Creative, and I'm a professor at Lesley University here in Cambridge, uh, Boston, teaching typography and visual communication. Fantastic. Fantastic. So tell us about the, your latest work. Oh, lovely. So, so because, uh, you know, I'm in both industry and academia, and I have to say each one sort of there's this lovely symbiotic relationship between the two. I wouldn't forsake one for the other. It really sort of completes my repertoire as a designer. I have, um, you know, my industry projects going on and my research and my teaching. And I'll sort of give you a little sort of preview of uh, what's going on in my little world. So um, my work spans, um, I sort of don't think about medium per se. So uh, I will find myself working on print pieces, publication, uh, and even space. So right now I'm, and I love creating sort of messaging and stories for clients. So I'm working with biotechs and also a theater company to rebrand, you know, their, their whole sort of their story. And that brand can extend from print to web and to that final space. So at the end of the day, you have this cohesive brand language. And that's sort of my forte, you know, bringing my architecture and design skills into it. Um, I'm also, you know, I have two commissioned pieces of art. I have canvas staring in my studio that I'm yet to start and it's brewing. And I also am designing somebody's tattoo and I'm working on a journey map for somebody's life. So I really am interested in an in information design. You know, how do you visualize somebody's story, you know, and sort of make sense of it, have those little sparks come together. Sounds all over the place, but for me, it's all very much holistic design. In terms of research, um, I don't teach in the summer, but I'm working. Uh, I, I was fortunate to get uh, an innovation grant as part of uh, Lesley University, and I'm working to create for the fall a sort of charrette, a workshop for the students, which is multidisciplinary, which is really the basis of my pedagogy, where we can look at a space and sort of redesign it and have many trans medial aspects of design come to be to create an experience. It's still a bit esoteric. I haven't yet formulated the syllabus, but I'm working on creating that. It's very exciting that we got the grant and we're just kind of trying to get our boots on the ground and figure out what is it that we want the students to get out of this experience. It's always, I everything I do will always have this underlying tone of integrated design, transdisciplinary design, because that's really where you know, my whole thought process stems from. Mm. I'm also sort of fortunate enough to be a part of a collaborative team working on um, this wonderful project called the Locker of Memories, which is, uh, it's, we're trying to tell the story of the Jungerhof concentration camp, which was the first Latvian uh, concentration camp. And uh, how do we, how do we tell a story? And I'm sort of the design liaison uh, responsible for how do you express something respectfully, poignantly, elegantly, you know, something that is so provocative, so delicate, so tenuous. So I just through the language of the, the design elements, right? How, what kind of 
color palette would you choose for their 3D tour? You know, the, so the simple, the, the brass tacks of that, really enjoying working with the historians, with the researchers, with the, with, with the AI, you know, the guys doing the video stuff. It's all very exciting that it's where so many heads coming together, trying to, you know, sort of convey the story that ought to be told. So that's brewing. I have some papers to write, but they're all blanks sitting on my you desk. Have the, you have the time? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know <laughs> how, but please don't get me wrong. You will find me sitting on the couch, staring into space or running back to my kitchen and cooking up a meal because that's therapeutic for me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so it is. Um, but, you know, if I have to really think about it, I, I, and this is something I like to bring to the classroom, which is probably, you know, what would be of interest to get into is uh, the notion of, I don't see them as compartmentalized. If I am designing somebody's tattoo or I'm creating a brand and I'm creating a cover for a book, I feel that I'm applying the same creative principles. Of course. You know, every, although it's the medium that gets changed. I'm not going to stifle myself worrying, oh, I've never done that medium before, but rather think that at the end of the day, those tenets of design, you know, which at the very basic level is that negative space and contrast and tension and depth, everything needs it. You know, even in architecture, you look at the elevation of a building or a floor plan, you're using those same principles. So really that's where my pedagogy stems from. And I like sort of talking to the students about that, you know? Mm -hmm. You're telling me you're a photographer and you're separating that from the fact that you're an illustrator and a graphic designer, but they're all really of course, intertwined, of course. right? Of course they are. I mean, we're using the rule of thirds in everything, you know, we're using mm -hmm. the composition in all those aspects. And I'm, I notice that with students, they're very quick to get siloed into things. And yeah, I because, that. It's because it's because we modularized design education right. a long time ago. And, and actually we did, we did this to them instead yes. of keeping the studio culture. Yeah. We, we modularized their education. So now they see right. this fragmented because that's what we showed them. That's what they showed them. And I, I really wish baby steps, right? How do we re, how do we unlearn that? How are we yes. okay? You know, be not belonging, right? How do, and I have to tell you, left to this, I studied architecture in India 20 odd years ago. And I studied in Delhi. I worked in Bangalore. I still have some houses standing, so that's a good thing. Uh, I did residential architecture. And then I came here. But all, all along as a kid, I've always done fine arts. Uh, so somewhere for me, uh, I, I loved fine arts and I loved math and I still do. And I thought, oh, architecture is a lovely confluence of the two. Somewhere down the line, interested in typography and design, which brought me to do a master's here. But nobody, it was more, um, I fell into it through gut. Nobody mentored me and I was always made to believe I'm switching fields switching from architecture to design. And it was only recently, maybe only five, as early as five, seven years ago, that I felt comfortable that, no, I, it's really holistic, right? Absolutely. It's not so much design. My architecture in, really informs my, the way I create a composition, you know, that sense of structure. The fine artist in me informs the fluidity that I bring in. So I came, I came to that happy place only recently. Yeah. And that's what I feel. I, I've had to go through this chronology and figure it out. And I just want to bring that empowerment to the classroom. You know what? It's okay. It's, you're not all over the place. It's a beautiful space to be. Yes, that's brilliant. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, carry on. I have no, so so tell, oh, us okay. a tell us a story about how you got into teaching. That's lovely. Um, it was fairly serendipitous left to this. Uh, 
I've always wanted to. It was always this bubbling, brewing thing in me that never quite happened. And then I, lo and behold, moved to Boston. And you know, Boston is like this melting pot of institutions and educational institutions. I loved the university setting at Leslie. I was there just um, sort of in, on a jury, mentoring, looking at portfolios. And it was a very natural course that I just struck up a conversation, expressed my interest with the chair, and lo and behold, um, my soft corner is always typography, will always be typography. It's, I'm always like this. I want to, like this drill sergeant, making sure students realize the power of it. And I was given the chance to teach typography. And, and this was four years ago, you know, and... Okay. Um, since then, it's that's where I got in, and I love you know the university environment that I'm in, the people I work with, the professors I collaborate with, and more importantly, you know the students that uh, come in, hardworking, sincere, read, and I realized, wow, this really does sort of complete my repertoire as a designer, and I'm also reminded, Lefteris, I come from a pedig pedigree family of philosophers and teachers and uh, professors, you know, so I know my grandfather and my great grandfather, who was like the teacher to the king in Mysore, and my grandfather, who was a, you know, a professor of philo philosophy in Mysore University, they'd be kind of proud of me that I'm, I'm in this. And I, I love being in it. And I love that I can, I can teach and I can practice and have each one sort of really sort of, you know, play with the other. Hmm. Hmm. That's great. Yeah, yeah. So, what what are the opportunities uh, for for students and graduates uh, to enter into into the market, into employability in this very complicated world? What, what would you say? You know, is the smoothest way to to, to transition them to that? Oh gosh, um, this I I have a deep soft corner for what I teach, which is graphic design, because I feel there's a omnipresence of graphic design. There's graphic design is everywhere. Everything needs storytelling. Everything can be interpreted as a visual story. So our role as designers is pretty much in every industry and in every discipline. So we're not sort of sequestered and we only have to look in a very sort of um, sort of myopic way of uh, I'm trying to look for a job in a design agency or a marketing firm. If you have an interest, and I, I tell these to the students, say you're, you're a skateboarder, go look at a company that does that and you'll find a role for yourself to market for them, you know, to story tell. So in other words, that empowerment of the relevance and the pertinence of design, and it's, it's always going to be there. My fear is the sense that students have that if they learn tools, they become designers. Mm. So that's that thing that I'm constantly balanced with. I am all for tools as a weapon. You know, I'm always trying to sharpen my software skills. But before that, they have to really do the work, you know, get down, roll up their sleeves and really get, you, you, we have to learn how to see, you know, learn how to, really uh, have a sen build your sensibility. So that is the struggles and the challenges. How do we balance that off, right? I don't think that just understanding your software skills will make you anything. In design, we're really learning how to see, we're learning how to value, and we're trying to build sensitivity. And that takes time, and that takes iterations. Mm -hmm. The challenges every, we live in this ephemeral world where we're so quick to move on to the next thing, right? Our attention span is so low. How do we get the students to keep doing, keep making? And if we can build in an environment where they can just make mistakes, be messy, you know, we'll get, we're so quick to want to fall in love and get to that finish line, right? So these are the things in the studio I always, I feel the challenge and I'm not, I don't know the answer yet. But these are in the forefront of what I, you know, I, I do want to talk about what I like to sort of bring to uh, the classroom in visual communication and typography. Um, it's this, my, this belonging 
or not belonging is something I'm very eager to bring because not belonging instantly sort of uh, feeds into the notion of holistic design. Um, so if the students can come in and realize that, you know what, uh, as, as I just mentioned before, that I can use the same principles and the same creative process, and it's just a varying different medium. You know, it could be a product, it could be a print, it could be a web, but I'm using those same tenets of design that opens their mind to be more holistic, be more, you know, inclusive and welcoming of different compartments of design. Yeah. The other thing is um, I'm interested in, I'm always intrigued by graphic design students, uh, the fear to go beyond print, you know, beyond thinking in two dimensions. I'm very interested and I've sort of brought to my practice an understanding of anthropometry, human scale. Yeah. You know, the minute you put a little figurine next to an object, mm. it's wisdom, right? Oh, I understand how tall that is or how small that is. Unbeknownst to them, they're realizing the power of the human scale of movement. So Le Corbusier's modular book on anthropometry, sort of, I like introducing that to them. And they all get mm. a little, you know, but there's a little bit of math involved. How do we scale things? And, you know, it's not that they have to go out and turn into an architect. It's not that. But today's world has more transdisciplinary companies, like Pentagram, for example, right? They, we, they do everything there. Yeah. So I don't need to do it. But if I am discerning enough to understand it, I can collaborate better. Absolutely. Right? That's the whole notion. Like, let me understand it. It may not be your interest. I might be a staunch publication designer. Carry on, yeah. so let me, if you were going to ask. No, no, no you, you mentioned something about, you know, uh, wanted to get to the finish line before. So yeah. do you feel that we've over-commercialized design education? Yes, yes. Mm. Over-commercialized, so quick. And it scares, it also... <sighs> How do we compete with what's out there, right? Uh, I was I was talking to some people the other day and there's this software called Canva that everybody mm -hmm. can go on and build things on. And I think it's a beautiful thing. It makes it a little more accessible. But at the same time, where do we fit in, right? I vehemently do not want to use that tool and I, because- well, Canva, right? Canva is not design. It's, it's, it's not design, it's just surface, a template. Surface patterns. Exactly. This exactly. Is surface pretty patterns. Yeah. So, how do we say it's not that you dig deeper in design? It's mm. it's your creative. It's your thinking. So, yes, and that's that's an example of commercialization, right? Mm -hmm. How do we bring it back? How do we talk about design theory? And I remember when I did my masters, you know, I studied visual anthropology and material culture. And design has such a role in that. How mm. do we go back and, you know, look at that? A little esoteric, yes. But that balance, right? Of the theory of design, the design principles, but also the tactical aspects that will make mm. you a better designer. What is the end result in this? I, I wonder. It's a question. It's a debate. What do, are we do trying think, to make? Do you think students have the time to play? There, we, I think in our classes, in our studio, we ought to give them time to play and make a mess, mm. right? Because in the real world, it's unforgiving. Mm. Everything is uh, monetized based on time, right? Uh, and the value add is there. The value is not in, I tried, I explored, I faltered, I made a mess. And so in the classroom, if we can create an environment that's safe and non-judgmental, which also brings me to another aspect of what I like bringing to the classroom. I spoke about the holism of design, but also transdisciplinary of two dimension and three dimension. The third aspect that this brings me to is, I'm very interested in identity and biography. Um, in the sense that sometimes we feel we should wash ourselves and design in a sterile, sterile way, a sterile, sterile British English, sterile American, okay, in yeah. a sterilized way. But what, 
but I feel strongly that I do because I am. And I need to understand myself better, my identity and my biography. And if I know myself better, I will design better. So in the classroom environment, you know, bringing the students to really engage with self, their own ethos, their own biographies. Tell me about you. Tell me about the things you like. Hmm. And also tell me about what's not so good. So in Buddhism, you have what is pleasant, what is painful, and what is neutral. Suppose we create a space where I'm open to really investigating myself, where I also delve into the things that are not so pretty, right? It could be what I've lost, what I grieve. Keeping that, how do we turn that into a visual interpretation? So this is something, this is an experiment I did with my yeah. visual communication. Tracy, you were going to say something left. No, no, please go on, go yeah, on. Yeah, please, yeah. I just want to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was... It was challenging because it becomes provocative, right? Oh my God, I don't want to be vulnerable in this space. But how are you emboldening your uh, students? This is what we, how am I going to embolden the students to embrace who they are? And then we started with creating door skins, you know, because at the end of the day, you need a tactical medium. Like what are mm -hmm. we really creating? So tell me it's your biography that's going to get translated on this door. And tell me the things about you. It's your, your family, the, your pensions, the, your predilections, what you like, what your activities are. But also tell me your so-called misadventures or the things that have happened in your life. Because always remember who you are today is not just because of the lovely things that have happened in life. It's also because of the not so pretty things, right? Mm -hmm. I am who I am today for all the wrong things that I have done. So how do you bring that into the picture? And it was very cathartic, uh, Lefteris, for some. It was not easy. It's not always easy. We all have our personalities and, you know, there's, but we just attempted to create the space. And I have to tell you, it's, it sort of, you know, brings a lump to my throat. Some students want, had to express loss of a family member or they expressed anxiety and stress. And they expressed that visually, whether it was a mm. crumpled photograph or a scratched out or a yeah. void, a yeah. void in the layout. You know, so that was a lovely space to be. I don't know, from my end, it was successful, but I still think it's an experiment because where else in the real world are they going to be allowed this, right? Yeah. But how can I divorce myself from who I am in what I do? Yeah. So, so we tried to create that. So that's interesting. And I still want to, the more I investigate and I, I really want to bring that out. And they were kicking and screaming at the onset. By the end of it, there were successes and not so much. But I really think that's a very interesting space to be. Bring out your biography. All the good, the bad, the ugly. And let us give it a visual voice because beauty, what is beauty? Beauty is also the not so pretty. You know, it's like this whole debate on what is aesthetic sensibility, you know? So that was very interesting. Some of the works they produced, you know, they sort of, they designed a, a door, a web skin, and then we moved that same story of self to a shoe and a space. So like that, I'm bringing in a little bit of transmedial design going from two dimension to three dimensional, but also tapping into self, tapping mm. into identity. That was exciting. Yeah, um, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned Buddhism earlier. Well, desire is, all, is, is the obstacle and the fuel at the same time. So yes, it, it's, right? It's, uh, it's the obstacle it's a, and the fuel. Wow. And, you know, maybe, Lefteris, we only realize that in hindsight, in retrospect, right? At the moment, it's devastating, Right. It's easy for us to say, but only in when we think in retrospect, do we realize that that informs who you are. And now we look at us getting all philosophical, but I, yeah. but, that, but I enjoy that. I enjoy that conversation so much, you know, I, mm. um, and I, I think about myself too, you know, these different paths I've taken, been all over the place and trying to come to my happy place and also realizing that everything I do informs who I, you know, Absolutely. who I am, you know, that sort of a notion. 
Um, so what are, what are the obstacles that you are facing? And, and if you could change something magically like, like that tomorrow mm-hmm. and in, in, your, in your education, in, in, in design education, what would you change? Um, I do feel, so the lovely thing is I was given the, the, this wonderful, uh, eman- it was fairly emancipating to be given uh, the ability to recreate syllabus and experiment. Mm. But I think the obstacle, there is, as you said, we're still fighting with a very parochial compartmentalized system. Mm. I would love to work with you know, I'm, I'm walking to my classroom and I'm passing through and looking at the art studio and looking at the collages they're making. And I would love a more open dialogue and say, hey, can my graphic design students and your art students get together and do a project together? Uh, and forget us in the, just the College of Art and Design. I would move one step further and say, what about you liberal arts students studying philosophy and history? Are you writing a paper that you feel you need that represented um, visually? Can we collaborate? Do you need an information design to illustrate your uh, your his- historic research or your philosophy? But you see, I want graphic design to creep in to every aspect because I feel there's a place for it. But it is the challenge. This is all me theorizing and saying, oh, in cloud cuckoo land, I would love this. But how do we make it work, right? How do I collaborate? Because even in my own College of Art and Design, we work in silos. It's, it doesn't, the system doesn't lend itself for that fluidity of conversation. Hmm. So what if we mandate um, group discussions and then we open it up to the liberal arts college and the and then the engineering college and everybody realizes again this is stum- stemming from my bias that graphic design is pervasive and omnipresent i can see myself working with everybody here everybody needs a good sense of typography or composition or understanding of negative space so the challenge today is the silos but the exciting thing is the doors are slightly opening. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm still a neophyte educator, but that also helps because I feel I'm brave. I, I'm going to try, you know, I'm not yet completely um, sort of, uh, what's the word uh, left to this? I'm not um, scarred and, you know, just doing my thing. I want to investigate more. Mm-hmm. I want to investigate what it means to truly be transdisciplinary. And I feel we as designers, as and graphic designers, have a nice sort of sort of um, foundation to sort of push that through, you know. Um, so I'd like to see that happening. I don't know how, but baby steps, perhaps. You know, mm. uh, it's interesting. You know, I I gave a talk, you know, uh, on to architect students in India a couple of years ago on the power of graphic design and presentation. You know, and for them, it was also fairly cathartic. They never, people don't think, think about, wow, I never realized that type has such character and can evoke so much emotion. You know, it's Mm -hmm. always treated as this stepsister that I, as an afterthought, but it can really hold the voice. The way I lay something out on a page can really affect my end user. You might have amazing content, but if that's not presented intuitively, it's lost, right? So again, it's me harping about mm. visual communication and visual storytelling, right? So it's, a, it's lovely that I would love the students to realize that have that empowerment, you know, that, oh, wow, yeah, this is a really well, special if, place to be. If we can bring back the studio culture that we yes. used to have. Yes. then you can do all these things. Yes. But as long as things are modularized and even more in silos, right. we actually teach students that these are silos. As I said before, we I are know. teaching them that things are separate because right. we actually have, we took this idea from, from other disciplines of modularization. Yeah. But it work in what we're doing. The studio culture unifies everything. So if, right. if, if a greater studio culture could be established, right, right, right. Then, then, then all these things you're talking about, art and philosophy, and all these yeah. are in the studio culture. But it doesn't yeah. matter because you're pulling, you're pulling things as you right. need them. You're yes. not doing something. You're not doing typography. You're not doing illustration. No. You're not doing right. graphics. Right. You're in the studio doing. looking for to, to, to a brief. 
Absolutely. And it becomes inclusive. And is it, and I feel first year students should not be allowed to pick any, any major. You should just come being a creativist mm. and give yourself time. How do we, you know, change that, that paradigm, right? In our own yeah. pedagogy. How do we say you, you're here because you love design and art and let's explore all these different aspects of it and don't make we're so quick to define and put terminologies right we Absolutely. feel when we put a term on something it becomes formal even yeah. for me you know um 50 10 15 years ago i sold my first piece of art and then i said oh am i an artist now you know, what you know so it's and then oh the, uh, suddenly i get this validation right we're so we're in love with terminologies and language to things, right? Yeah. So say you've just come here and we'll, we'll come up with a new term. Is it a creativist? You're just a maker of things and let's just do. But, I, what, but what are the logistics of that left to this? How do we start that sort of, that school of thought, literally and metaphorically? Um, I don't know the answer to that, but more conversations like this, more dialogues like this is only so enriching you know it's really Absolutely. excites me you know the Absolutely. prospects of it yeah um how can our viewers find you and listeners so i i it's right now it's on linkedin and my instagram account and website okay. and my email and i have to tell you i just took down my older website and my new one is under construction oh so fantastic can, so it's on disha de dot char creative dot net i'm not sure left to if you have i can send it yes of course uh, yeah of course. i'll absolutely send it to you but it's my gmail account too um and uh, on linkedin for sure and i i this is full disclosure on me as much as i love um working for everybody else anytime it's for me that i have to create my own yeah. stuff I'm always running and not wanting to touch it with the barge pole. So I take time to put my own things together, but I'd love yeah. to share my work with whoever, you know, reaches out and just have a conversation. And I at least send case studies on the varying, uh, you know, the varying uh, sort of uh, uh, design projects that I'm working on. It'll be lovely. Yeah. Lovely Brilliant. to share that. Yeah. What advice would you like to leave us with? Oh, Gosh, you make me sound like I'm worthy of giving advice. That's lovely. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm going back to, I'll say this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to first quote somebody that, so it's, it stuck with me this year. The Oscars this year, the infamous Oscars uh, that happened early in June. Not, um, the one thing I take away is not what Will Smith did, but Riz Ahmed is a, is a Pakistani-born British actor and he came up to receive um, an award for a documentary. And I don't know, I, don't, I won't quote him verbatim, but he said something like, um, for all those who don't belong, for all those stuck in no man's land, we'll meet you there. That's where the future is. And I just loved that. It was very empowering for me. And I want to tell students this, that as you and I have just discussed, we're trying to garner and foster an environment where you don't have to belong to one. What does that mean for you? It could be your own identity. It could be your interests in, in, design, in design fields. Allow yourself to embrace it all. That's one. The other thing I'd, I'd say is I am and therefore I do. So I'm very intrigued by you all embracing who you are and your identity and your sense of self, as we talked about, the good, the bad, the ugly, and see that how, how that informs your design. Anything that you produce will always have a piece of you. So you might as well delve and then just embrace and discover yourself further. That's really a beautiful space to be. Um, and I'll also say this, um, don't take yourself too seriously. I love, of course, philosophizing, you know, but it's always a sense of humor is a beautiful thing. And um, treat typography with as much respect as you do image making. It is the poet in your work and it will elevate your work. 
And if you can, do me a favor and acquaint yourself with pikas and use them whenever you're designing a layout that would be really beneficial. And that's my little two petty bits for tactical design and philosophizing design. Brilliant, brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. Thank you so much for coming, Shalini. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic to have you. Thank you, Lefteris. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.